Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're looking at the most efficient hotkey setup for patch 14 because we have even more keys to allocate than before, starting with the new left side lean. This moves your gun from your right shoulder to your left shoulder to allow you to shoot at a tighter angle around left side peaks without exposing as much of your body and I wanted to put this on something that felt intuitive and originally started with control and Q. Unfortunately, this keybind gets in the way if you are crouching and trying to lean to the left at the same time. And although I use toggle crouch, sometimes it was accidentally switching me back to the right shoulder. So I swapped this back over to control and a mouse button because I didn't really have any spare keys left and using the control modifier is actually pretty good. If I had a mouse with a button actually connected to the scroll wheel itself left and right, I probably would have put it there, but my mouse doesn't do that. So I've ended up settling for this. The other new feature of patch 14 is vaulting. The default for this is vault on continuous spacebar and jump on release. What this means is that if you hold down the button, then you vault over various objects. And when you let go of spacebar, then you jump. Using this method, you can't put jump on press because that means that the continuous press of vault never happens. But on release, it introduces a small delay if you're trying to time your jumps, which is a little bit awkward. You can alternatively put vaulting on auto and what this does is it vaults over small objects by itself as you move towards them but sometimes this happens when you don't want it to so I've set mine to hotkey and I'm currently using control and spacebar for vault. Some other people are using V or B or really any of those keys just above the spacebar where your thumb naturally rests and I do think that that is technically better if you can because it doesn't get in the way of crouch but I use these buttons for other things so I put it on control spacebar instead and haven't really had any issues. Next, we're going to look at the various press release keybinds that I have that allow you to cut down on muscle memory and improve your efficiency with the keyboard in RAID. The first one being the heavy and light bleed on one hotkey that I get asked about all the time. This interacts with the new scroll to heal a body part function as well, so it's quite important to get right. So for this, you can pick whichever key you want your item to be activated on, and I normally use the button 5, so I'm going to use that while I'm showing you here. But effectively, what you do is you set slot 4 to the button you want, in this case 5 on release, and slot 5 to the same button, number 5, on press. What this means is that whatever you put into slot 5 will get activated first when you press down the 5 key. Whatever you put into slot 4 will get activated second when you let go of the 5 key. The reason I do it this way is because this allows you to prioritize heavy bleeds, light bleeds and healing without having to think about it in raid. Once you set up these controls, you then need to go and bind the items on your PMC in the order that you want them to actually be used. I hover the mouse over the heavy bleed item first and hold down the 5 button without letting go. I then move the mouse over to my light bleed and healing item which is usually a car kit or a salewa and then I let go of the 5 button and that puts it on slot 4 which is the release key. So now imagine a situation in raid where you have a heavy bleed, a light bleed and also some actual damage. When I press the 5 key the heavy bleed item activates first because that's on press. Once the heavy bleed is sorted out, when I press 5, that then activates the light bleed because that is on release and is prioritized within the car med kit or the Salewa over actual healing. If I don't have any bleeds at all, then the 5 on release again just activates the car kit or the Salewa and that just heals my body part. The best part about this is because the med kit is on a release key, this then allows you to use the body part heal. So you hold down the 5 button and if you don't have any bleeds, you can then use the scroll wheel and heal the part that you would like. The next extremely useful one is aim down sights plus hold breath, but this only works for toggle ADS users like myself. If you're a hold ADSer, then you're out of luck. So to do this, you have aim down sights on right click on press as normal. But then what you do is you go to hold breath and you put that on right click on release. This means that when you press the right mouse button down, you aim down sights. And when you let go of the right mouse button, your PMC then holds breath and you have steadier aim all of the time. The other thing that's very useful is to bind another key for hold breath. I actually have a manual button on my mouse for hold breath. And what this does is that if I'm sniping, going prone or something, and I don't actually need to hold breath for the entire time, I can press that to get rid of it because obviously it comes on automatically for me every time I aim down sights, which is not always what I want. The third press release is for weapon jams. There are two parts to fixing a jam, inspecting the weapon and clearing the jam once the inspection has told you what kind of jam it is. There's two schools of thought on this, but I use the B key and I have fix malfunction on press, which is the second stage of the process. If a malfunction has just happened and you haven't identified the jam yet, this doesn't actually do anything. But what this means is that you can then put inspect weapon, which is the first part of the process, on B but on release instead. This means that when a jam happens and you press B, fix malfunction does nothing on press, but when you let go, inspect weapon activates on the release of B. 
Once you know what the jam is, pressing B again will now activate clear jam because that's first in priority on press and the weapon will be cleared. If you need to go and listen back to that the second time, I don't blame you because it is a little bit tricky at first. The only thing to watch out for here is that if you spam the B key as soon as a malfunction appears, it just keeps checking the gun over and over, so it needs to be given a tiny little bit of breathing space before it moves on to the next part of actually clearing it. The other method is the same, just the other way around. With inspect on press and fix on release, you have to hold down the B key for the entirety of the inspect animation, and once the malfunction type is identified, then you let go of B and it fixes it. I personally think this is more fragile because I prefer to just press keys with a small delay than hold them down, but it's up to you and I know people who do it either way. The next one is weapon swapping. So what I've basically done is I've changed the one key to swap weapon rather than having two independent keys on one and two for the two different guns. If I have my primary weapon out and I press one, nothing happens on press because it's already out, but when I release it, it swaps over to weapon two. When I have weapon two out and I press one, it simply swaps back to the first weapon. This means that I don't need to remember which gun is in which slot, it always just changes from one primary to another when I press 1 no matter what. The reason why I have a 2 key still set as the second bind is that if I have my pistol out for example or my melee weapon and I press 1 it'll take me to my first weapon, whereas 2 will then take me to my second weapon and I don't have to go to the first and then swap to the second. So with press release out of the way, this is a good time to talk about the sidearm quick swap. I actually have sidearm quick swap on number three because I like having my pistol on three and this I have set up by default on press. So I always use the fast swap automatically. If I want to change over more leisurely to my sidearm, I have that on left control and three because I'm not as reliant on my muscle memory if I have the time to do it. All right, so onto reloading our weapons. The default keybinds are reload weapon on R and emergency weapon reload on double press R. The problem with this is that because you have the same key bound to two different actions, when you press R, the game doesn't know if you want to do a reload or an emergency reload straight away. There's a feature called the double click timeout, and this is the amount of time it will wait for the second R press to determine whether you want to do a reload or an emergency reload. And the unfortunate thing about this is that it means that when you press R to reload in the first place, you have an at minimum 300 millisecond delay. To avoid this, you want to move emergency weapon reload onto a different key. And what does work is having it on a modifier. So something like left control and R or left control double press R, which is what I have it on. So either way, my advice is to move it away onto a different key or just completely unbind it all together. There is no way to actually unbind specifically. The only way that you can do this is by setting another key as exactly the same and then it deletes the initial bind. So the last one for multi-use keys that I have is on melee weapon. There are two different things you can do with this. One which is take your melee weapon actually out, which I have on left control and M. And the other one is just to do one swing with the melee, which I have on standard M on press. I almost never take my melee weapon out ever, which is why I have it on a modifier, but melee attack I do use sometimes for getting through glass on certain maps such as interchange. This way I just press M, I get one quick slash, and then it goes straight back to my gun. This last set of hotkeys are just miscellaneous things that I've discovered over my time playing Tarkov so far, and the first one is to change your painkiller hotkey to the console or tilde key. In my opinion, the tilde key is actually a really amazing key because it is in a very prominent position and can be felt even in an emergency when you're panicking because it's right in the corner of the keyboard. I definitely don't need this to be the developer console as one of the most important keys to reach. And so I've swapped this over to the hotkey that I use for painkillers because I can press this when I'm in a complete panic. I still want to be able to access the console, so I've put this on control tilde, but this allows me to have a painkiller panic button when I'm in an emergency. The next one is discard. Having discard bound to your mouse in some way makes looting 10 times easier in raid and insurance frauding and all that kind of stuff. I have a specific button for it, but I know some people use control and left click to discard, but this is extremely useful and speeds up your looting a lot. A random one is that you can bind voice lines by pressing YY to bring up the radial menu and then right clicking on the voice lines which allows you to bind them to the F keys. Pretty random, I don't normally use it, but it might be useful for some people. You can also bind grenades that are in your pockets or rig because at the moment they get pulled out in a random order. This is ever since the grenade rework. By binding them to a specific item key, you can pull out exactly the one that you want. This is especially useful for smoke grenades and also once you've pulled it out, right click does an underarm throw. You can also bind small weapons to your rig. This doesn't pull them into either of your primary slots and you can use them directly out of your rig if you want to. Things like the MP9 or the MP7 or even something like the MP5 if you've got a three by one slot rig work. Not so useful anymore now that most things are examined but middle click examines items. 99% of people will know this. For those that don't, you'll thank me. And the final one that I think everybody knows is putting check time and exit on O rather than just time because then that allows you to check both at once and there's really no need just to check time without the extracts. 
So as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons and as always, have fun in your raids.